Thank you. All right, we're recording. Okay, no attendees right now. Uh, and I'm going to, okay. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to, I haven't had public, I haven't had any sleep since 3.30, 3 o'clock this morning, and I'm exhausted. I, oh, no. So I will be wonky. Um, I'm uh, seeing a presence of the quorum. I'm going to call the May 24th, 2023 meeting of the GOL committee to order. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting shall do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. I'm going to call the roll as a way of checking that we, everyone can uh, hear and be heard. Linda Griesmer? Present. Jennifer Taub? Present. Mandy Jo Hanke? Present. And I am present. Pat DeAngelis. Michelle Miller is uh, not with us today. Um, I'd like to. Um, get right to the non-voting members of the Finance Committee. It's been two weeks since the bulletin board notice went out. I have received no new CAFs. Uh, I sent out 10 or 11 CAFs to people as far back as 2019. I've had two rejections and no other responses. So right, so right now, unless I missed a CAF in my email, but I don't think I did, but right now we have uh, new CAFs from Bob Hegner and Matt Holloway, and who are currently members of the res non-voting resident members of the Finance Committee. There are um, terms end in June. Is it possible, this is a question, to simply say the pool is sufficient because we have two good candidates or do we need to uh, wait until there are three or, and what happens if there aren't? Mandy, you have any, go ahead. Um, the decision on sufficiency per the policy is up to the committee. Um, so the committee could make that decision, um, acknowledging, you know, I. I, I would be hesitant to acknowledge, despite my views um, about how good the candidates are, that that's one of the reasons we're declaring the pool sufficient. Um, right. You know, I think, you know, we could say it's sufficient given the timing and given, um, you know, that, that the pool includes people who are maybe already on the finance yeah. committee, you know, you know, I, and, and given that everyone that you reached out to that had prior replied has not, you know, I think we could do it in a way that doesn't necessarily say, a tip a hand to, you know, even though there's only two, who would we appoint or that we're declaring it sufficient because we like the candidates that have a yeah, plot. That's what I was worried about is how it would appear, which is kind of sad. Can, can I, uh, I'm just, okay, that's Bob Hegner's. I'm just checking to make sure we didn't receive any more because I actually thought we did. So Sarah Marshall's from well before the, Sarah Marshall's CAF um, submitted one that I believe had finance on it, but it was before the bulletin board was posted. Okay, I'm gonna call on Jennifer because I was trying to get her to respond. Yeah. <clears throat> So I haven't personally, I mean, it has been posted. You reached out to all those that had submitted CAFs over, you know, generous period of years. So I haven't personally reached out. I mean, I don't know how much, so it, we did, we've publicized it. I don't know how much individual counselors have been reaching out. I do believe Sarah Marshall is, you know, she's on this, she's an alternate for the ZBA and has applied for that. So I would think she, to make a decision for her she would rather continue on the zba where she's a voting member um, and let me just let me just mention i just came across her calf and it says finance committee oh, yeah. zba yeah. yeah but but under the policy unless she submits a separate one after the finance committee bulletin board notice was posted she is not technically an applicant for bulletin board so i assume 
Um, she is someone who Pat reached out to. I will do a double check. I sent out uh, between nine and 11. Um, I will reach, I'll check my sent list and I'll reach out. What I'd like us to do then is uh, wait until our next meeting, which is June 7th, which is still in time. What's the uh, council meeting after the 7th, Lynn? The 12th. Okay, it's, so that would work. the 5th and the 12th. And then no. I have another one, Pat. Wait. Everald Henry. Uh, who? who listed district advisory board finance committee. Who is this? And ZBA. Who? Everald Henry. I'm uh, that's that's not... this. But we have to remember under the council policy, only those people who submit CAFs after the bulletin board notice goes up are technically applicants. Anyone that's submitted within two years of that notice gets contacted by someone from GOL to ask if they're still interested in that. And if so, they're told to submit a new CAF. Yeah, so, I don't know where my list is of who I sent to, but I'm, oh, so I'm I think sending we, you a, yeah. a number of them. Um, hold on, because I just came across another one. So I think we just need Pat to double check to make sure she reached out to those that were recently submitted, likely because of the ZBA planning board process that might have included finance on them um, to see if they're- Yeah, no, that's fine. That's good. Finance. In terms of timing, um, the last council meeting, meeting in June is June 26th. That means that interviews for the positions have to happen by, and decisions on recommendations, Athena can correct me, have to be made by Thursday the 22nd at like four so that Athena can put the names on the notice, meeting notice. Um, so you were, if we don't make it, if we make a decision on June 7, um, we would have to do the interviews on June 21. The statements of interest would have to be due before the 14th because under the policy, the statements of interest need posted one full week before the interviews. Um, and all the applicants would have to be available for the 21st or okay. whenever we're meeting. So because their term ends, if we don't get it done by then, um, because, you know, they can't make the interviews uh, or new people get added and they can't uh, do what happens to the finance committee. Do they, can they, they just don't have them or can Mandy, and then I'll call you Jennifer. Mandy. So I, I would suggest if we can't get every applicant in for an interview by that 21st date because of scheduling issues, yeah. that, um, Pat, you may want to start now. Ask if the two people whose terms are ending would be willing to extend their terms by one or two months. And the GOL could vote that on the 21st as a recommendation to gotcha. continue the process. And the council could make that happen on the 26th. Okay, that seems reasonable. Is there, okay, Jennifer, and then anybody else who no, wants to? No, I was just to say, yeah, if we have another, I mean, I'll do some active outreach you know, between now and the end of the weekend. I just have to say for planning board and ZBA, I, for for the last like two months, anytime I correspond with, with my district, even if it's to pass on the traffic alerts because they've been impacting our district, I always have the links to the, you know, CAFs for planning board. I mean, I have a blurb that I just sort of cut and paste into everything. I got two, yeah. you know, one for each. It's really challenging. I don't yeah. know what to do about that. And, and I guess I feel more relaxed because we have two really good people, but that's not exactly how you're supposed to behave. Lynn? Yeah, a, a couple you. observations. First of all, I mistakenly sent you two or three submissions from 2022. So just, they're probably people you already reached out to. Second of all, uh, are, well, go ahead. They, they're names that are not on the council and not on the the finance committee. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, and you're right, Sir Marshall submitted with at least naming at least two. I I don't know the timing, but I just sent that one to you. Um, Bob Hagner, um, who you know has is an outstanding member, 
of finance, as is Matt Holloway. Bob has actually been on. He sent this in. And so he's did been Matt. on a total of four plus years because he was appointed in the first group mm -hmm. that we ever, but he's not, he has not served six years. Right. Uh, and Matt Holloway has only served one year. Yeah. So those are just yes. observations. Yeah. That's helpful to know. Yeah, yeah it is. Is. I mean, I guess I'd be more, no, I get, I'd be, one, I want to do this properly, um, but I guess I would be more concerned if we didn't have such good people on the finance committee generally. So, but right. that's not, yeah. Okay, so uh, that's that update. Um, I guess we can go right now, get the two proclamations out of the way. Um, where I had those set up. Okay. Um, yeah, let's look at uh, the citation first. And I found a couple of things that I thought needed correcting. Um, in the first now therefore. Um, which one are we on? The uh, citation. Okay. Recognition of Arwen, I'm sorry. In the uh, first now therefore, it says here achievement and it means it should be her. Yes. And in the last and further, if you look, it says a copy of this citation, it just says be sent, it should be to be sent. And uh, I believe there's a comma in the last whereas after 20, 2023, that should be there. Yeah, you're right. There should be a comma. I always forget that. Uh, yeah. To be sent. Let's, yes. let's get that one. I think this one's right. To cause a copy be sent. Uh, no. Hmm. Cause a copy. I think to be sent. Okay. What do you think? If it's correct with just B, then that's fine. It just sounds... Jennifer's name is added to counselor sponsors. Okay, one thing at a time. Are we uh, are we going to add two here or leave it be as Athena is success, suggesting? Cause a copy of the station B to cause something. Well, I think you're causing it to be. Yeah, that's. I think so too. There's, Mandy has her hand up, but I don't think we need two twos. It, Mandy? It's not on that, but you could just say to send a copy of the station to Arwen. <laughs> I like to be better. <laughs> or not to be. <laughs> that is the question on so many levels. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Lynn, is that you? Well, a, Mandy Joe has her hand up. Go ahead, Mandy. I had you. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, um, the second whereas. This is a couple of questions. Um, so it, it says highest achievement a girl can earn in Girl Scouting. So I just have a couple of questions because I know Boy Scouts have really changed their whole thing. Um, is Girl Scouts limited to only girls or girls? Yeah, trans? girls boys um, be there? And then number two, do you have to earn the gold award before you turn 18? It's um, girls girls, and, and um, people who identify as girls. Okay. And then, then should we say that a person can earn? Well, I, I was no, wondering, they're wondering girls. about the 18. Do you I, have to have the gold award before you turn 18? I can try to find that, but I, my sense is it's in, might be in the year you turn 18 so that it covers you all the way through high school. But I, I can connect, I can connect with my Girl Scout connections and find that out. <laughs> is there a reason you're asking this? Is there certain, cause they reviewed well, this. No, I guess the question about 18 is, um, at 18, we tend not to refer to 
kids as, you know, people as girls and boys, we tend to refer to them as men, women, or adults, right? And so, so I was curious, it, it just, that, that word stuck out to me for those two reasons, um, I, I, which is why I was asking the questions. So um, let me, you're saying in the second, whereas. Yeah. A um, girl. Say that a young woman can earn. Or, or a member. Say is the highest achievement a, a girl scout. Hold it, it, hold it. Please don't talk over each other. I like things to be casual. Jennifer, and then. Yeah. then. Well, I was just going to say highest achievement that a member can earn in Girl Scouting. That would work. Yeah. Lynn, does that feel okay to you? Fine. I think I think they're called girls until they're they're not Girl Scouts. They're Girl Scouts until they're there's a, a different category of Girl Scouts once they turn 18. Right. So I think it's a Girl Scout term. Okay. okay. Just let me mention this was built off of the one that we did two years ago or three years ago. Um and I'm fine with the change. I don't think that the people asking us will have a problem, but I do agree that uh, with Athena about how they refer to girls may not be what we want, but okay. I, I, I think that if you say that a member can earn. Members are adults too. Jennifer though. has her hand up. She's a sponsor as well. Sorry. I, that's a Jennifer, you're like, cutting out. Let's see hand. I was going to say member in Girl Scouting. I mean it. But I think member's fine. Or the highest achievement that can be earned in Girl Scouting. Mandy? Yes. I'm okay not changing it if, if that's the terms that Girl Scouting use. I just wasn't sure where Girl Scouting was because of all the changes Boy Scouting has done. So um, I thought I'd ask the questions. I want to go back to, to Jennifer's suggestion. I like that. Okay. Can you say it again, Jennifer? It's the highest achievement that can be earned in Girl Scouting. Highest achievement that can be earned in Girl Scouting. Yeah. Yep. Is everybody comfortable with that? Are people comfortable? Did we get all the other ones? I think um, it needs a date fixed to it as well. Maybe that's on the next page. I, no, sorry. it's down there. Oh, got it. Thank you. Yeah. And we changed here to her. Uh, we put in the comma after 2023. So I think that's it. Now someone make a motion. I move that we clear the citation, clear, consistent, and actionable. Is that, what I, is that how we do it for this? Yep. Second. Second. Okay. And then we'll do a round of voting. Uh, Lynn Griesmer? Yes. Mandy Jo Haneke? Aye. Jennifer Taub? Yes. And I'm an I. Okay, let's go on to the Juneteenth proclamation. Can you, Mandy? Um, the one in the Packet had two sponsors, but I believe Alicia Walker wanted to sponsor it too. That's right. That's true. Thank you. Is there anything that people are seeing or have seen, uh, Mandy? Um, the community sponsor shouldn't have a comma after it unless we were supposed to be adding um, other name, yeah, ancestral bridges or something. Hmm. You know, that's interesting that Anika didn't put that down. Yeah, and Deborah is uh, not ancestral bridges per se. Right. Yeah. It was just the, I, I didn't know. Yeah, it hmm. could have been. Should we? Way, so, should we add it? I'm, uh, let me check. Adenica? 
Oops, my chest. If you can get an answer right now. Yeah. All right, while she's doing that, can anyone see anything that needs to be that impacts clarity, consistency, or actionability? Is it otherwise the same as last year? Uh, um, I think there was some new some changes. Or is this the first? I think this there have been some changes, but I don't remember what they are. I apologize. Should the two and the half under the second whereas join together? Yeah. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah. <laughs> what what? A spell check on uh, texting. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to ask what you mistakenly put in. Don't worry about it. I'm not. <laughs> Athena, do we drive you crazy? You'll have to try harder. <laughs> I bet we can rise to the occasion. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, at Anika's request, please add Ancestral Bridges as a sponsor. Okay. Unless someone sees something else that needs to be amended. I make a motion that we declare the 2023 Juneteenth proclamation clear, consistent, and actionable. And Second. Okay. And uh, let's vote. Mandy Joe? Aye. Jennifer? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm an aye. So it's unanimous. With one absent. I'm not saying that. Oh. <laughs> okay. Let me look at this list. Um, the other thing that uh, I'd like to hear a little bit from you guys. Well, let's go to the ensuring safe access uh, to legally protected reproductive and gender affirming healthcare services, which were referred to us by the council. Um, and Lynn, no, Mandy Joe, you're one of the sponsors of that. I No, you can continue. I'm texting Anna. Okay. Um, in some ways, I feel like I need to recuse myself. I'm not really, but I, I am so in favor of this. It's a. It's. <laughs> I don't think that's a reason for. Recusing. Yeah, I don't think that's. Yeah. We're all there. <laughs> I think the only yeah. question is that we want to make sure that before we send it to legal counsel that we've um, through it carefully and understood. looked at it. But the other thing is, have Mandy Joe, did you and Anna, you and or Anna, uh, consult with Paul regarding any issues around implementation? So we do have comments from Paul. Okay. Um, on the whole bylaw, we did not include those in the pre presentation of the one we put in the packet for the council for referral. So um, I don't know whether Anna, I don't think Anna's going to be able to jump on, but I'm mm -hmm. waiting for that. Um, let me pull up. Um, <sighs> So I can go through some of the comments or talk about them at least. Okay, good. Um, Thank you. Mandy, I don't think I have a word version. So if there are edits, you can either send me a word version and I'll keep track or you can share. Yeah. So so I have a word version that I think includes the comments Paul had and was also what was referred, but I haven't gone back because because Anna's the one that finally accepted everything and then removed the comments. Um, I can send that to you. Um, let, let me do that now. Um, give me a second. I'm 
So I think it's the one that was referred, but includes the comments. But okay. I, I, I will say I have not compared the two, but I'm pretty sure it is. Okay, Athena, you should be getting that. And so, you know, like I said, Paul had given us comments. We did not make, we made a few changes related to those comments, more of some of the things we could address without necessarily legal review. Um, many of his comments relate to the need for legal review or further discussion at um, with some other staff members. Um, but we did not make changes related to that because we needed, you know, unless the bylaw was referred for discussion and recommendation, there's no sense in putting all that time in. Um, which is why we pulled the comments out and now it's time to to show you all those comments so that we know what we're asking for um in terms of legal and all and i have a question or two but yeah so i i can go through some of these it looks like athena has brought it up um can it be made a tad larger i, I can see paul bachman but i can't quite see his comment so the first one is on the definition of Amherst official, um, and he he indicates it's a very broad definition. It's exactly what we expected Paul to say. Um, Pat, if you remember, it's exactly what he said to, this is the definition we used in our face recognition bylaw before we pulled face recognition. Right. So <laughs> it's exactly what I expected him to say. We, we just need to hammer out exactly who would count. Um, so my question in this is, Mandy Jo, does this include elected officials? Yes, as long as we are acting on behalf of the town. Okay. So again, it, it's something that needs discussed and all. Uh, and I would caution us getting into discussions today. I just thought I'd go through the comments so that when Pat, I assume will say, send it to legal. Um, yeah. Pat can talk about, are there other definitions legal would like to see or something? <laughs> but um... uh, I have a question uh, about the official, uh, the Musante Health Center that is in our building, but it, I don't, isn't it run by the Hilltown Health Center or something like that? So if they're not employees of the town, how are they covered in terms of maintaining privacy, et cetera, et cetera? So the health center itself um, is an actual health um, healthcare entity. Mm -hmm. And so they actually have a whole lot of requirements um, under federal law, including the HIPAA requirements. Um, but, you know, and so there's other things there that some places have if you're actually a health thing. And this gets into a different issue that this particular safe access doesn't deal with, which is in some sense the crisis pregnancy centers and their advertising of what is presumably health care without actually being healthcare providers and being subject to those HIPAA and other healthcare regulations that someone like the Musante Health Center or a hospital would be subject to. That's not what this is. Um, mm -hmm. So this definition, as Paul says, is very broad. Um, you'll see it's pretty much any person that acts on behalf of the town while acting on behalf of the town. That's, that's one of the key phrases, while acting on behalf of the town and when performing work for the town under something. And so, for example, if we give money to Musante Health Center, I don't know whether we do, <laughs> but say we did um, because they got a grant from us or something. If they were, if they were, performing the work under that grant, they would be subject to this. But if they're performing work under some other grant or some other funding, that that work performed under that other stuff under this definition would not be subject to this bylaw. 
only the work performed under this grant. So, so what I will say is it is an extremely broad definition, which is what Anna and I started out with, but we should hear from KP law as to whether it's even manageable. Um, but we intended to start out with something as broad as possible. Okay, thank you. Can we move on to Paul's next comment? Or any comment or question that other members of the committee have? Yeah, I do. And it, the reason I raised it is because in the meeting, um, you know, because I kept making, I wanted, I explained to Mandy Jo and Anna, I, want, I was trying to get as good an example as possible. And the one Mandy Jo you used was, you know, you as a counts, you as a person who lives in Amherst provides a place for somebody who from out of state who's come here for an abortion. You're not acting on behalf of the town. No, I'm not. And and that's not what what this would do. So no, I'm not. Yeah. But and, and, yeah, what go ahead. the Amherst official defines who can give information to someone seeking information from another state, basically. So you'd have to look at the prohibitions, which is actually where the next comments are. Um, you know, and so information so what the bylaws planning is intending to do is to prohibit amherst officials if we're acting in our official capacity from handing information over um and ensuring that if we're acting in our capacity as amherst officials that information is kept confidential whether or not it actually falls under those rules that pat was talking about under and i was talking about under federal hipaa regulations and all um and so it really is aimed at what people acting on behalf of the town can disclose to other people, not what I as a private individual can disclose. Okay. So as Paul says in this comment, um, He's he 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 understands with the broad definition. How does prohibition number one interact with that definition? Um, legal pr proceedings and all of that. So he basically sets forth his concern there and the need for the KP law review in his comment as to C one mm -hmm. and C two, since he copied the comment basically, right? Which is why we. Anna and I did not change the definition. We recognize we have to have those conversations with legal. How do they interact and what can we do? Um, the next one is about public records. Um, and I guess this one, again, probably goes to legal because yep. um, are we are we allowed to under state law as a town narrow the definition of public records, I guess would probably be the way I would phrase it to KP law, because I think that's what we're intending to do is to say, hey, we can't give this information out. You know, we're the bylaws trying to say to the town, no, you can't disclose that information or hand that information over, even if you receive a public records request in the state indicates it is a public record. So we're trying to narrow that definition and say, no, it's not a public record anymore. Not if you're going to use it for that purpose. Um, so that's our intent in the bylaw. Okay. Lynn? Yeah, I, I'm i glad this will go to KP Law having been this, been subject to a significant public records request uh, and the redaction thereof. Uh, anything that is health related, identified, youth, et cetera, I mean, Athena knows this much better than I do, may be in the public record, but they're then struck out of the public record. They're blocked, they're X'd out or blocked out. So I I'm glad this is in there because this the issue of health related things in public records clearly are part of what you're allowed to eliminate. 
but the question is how much of it. Okay, thank you. Jennifer? Um, <clears throat> I guess more of a question, Can what legal counsel would, would weigh in on this. Can a town supersede a state's regulation or are we? We can so make I, it, so, I so, thought we could make it stricter if we, but we can't make it less restrictive. Oh, we can make it stricter. Okay, that's good. Generally, generally that's the case in, in legal standards. Um, it's why we need KP law to, right. to weigh With in you. on that. Okay. Um, let me see. This is a really good, I was concerned about competent, understanding competent jurisdiction when I first read this in, in, in the council packet. Um, and does it, what does it refer to? Because right now the federal courts would probably support Massachusetts, but who knows how long that will stay. Um, do you have any comment beyond that, beyond your question, oh. Mandy? So, so let me talk about number four. Paul Paul said he would need to talk to obviously town attorney and police chief on yeah. um, custody issues. Where the highlight on competent, you know, in the, in the two places where I put the comment of limit to Massachusetts court, what about federal courts? Andy actually brought that up to me um, during the last meeting, maybe during a break. So I highlighted it and added that in. Um, it, the, the phrase except is required by an order of a court of competent jurisdiction. And he said, okay, so what if the Texas court has the subpoena? Mm -hmm. um, do Does this essentially create the big loophole we're trying to close um, is I guess the way it would be because because Texas's court is a court of quote competent jurisdiction so I think the question on that one is can we limit it to specific courts or can we even get rid of that you know exception completely um you know or could we say only a Massachusetts court is a court of competent jurisdiction, not a court in Texas or in Florida, or only the Massachusetts district court of the federal courts. Like, can we limit that? Because as Andy pointed out, that phrase might actually basically um, allow Texas to drive a hole through what we're trying to prevent, say. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Um, you'll see some resolved um, issues that we didn't delete um, in this one. We had the wrong words, so <laughs> that comment can be deleted. We had actually okay. said town agenda because we just typed something in wrong <laughs> um, in, in, in Scrivener type things. So mm -hmm. the resolved ones, we we it was just a lot of... Um, mm -hmm issues that we fixed before we presented it to you all. Um, and then he talks about the contract issues um, in terms of how we would enforce this, which would also need to be reviewed um, yeah. on whether it's possible and if so, how. But yeah. you know, in terms of getting that information, I would say before GOL discusses substantively, are these the enforcement mechanisms we want? Um, yeah. Okay. Anything else? Those were the comments he proposed, he provided to us. Are there any other comments from members of the committee or Athena? Lynn? Um, I, I, I'm hoping that in the legal opinion, um, we might, um, the KP law might comment on how this um, goes further than the state law. And um, I'm sure it does, but I want to make, I'd like to have the council understand that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mandy? Yeah, I, I would say with that one goes further than the, the other phrases I could use is supports the state law um, and also interacts with that state law. 
you know, sort of what's that interaction? How does it support it? And those are some other phrases to use to get to, I think, what Lynn's asking for. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else? And Mandy, Joe, why don't you make the recommendation? The motion. I don't. I don't know whether we need a full vote, but um, yeah. So I. I think we need a. I think this is one this, we need. A, uh, so do you want a motion, Pat? I don't. Think I don't we know. Need okay. I, I would just say I. I think we should get a KP law opinion before we talk about this substantively. Yes, absolutely agreed. So that's done, right? Good. <laughs> that was easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, where am I? Okay. okay. Um, yes. I'd Lynn? like to just ask a clarifying question. It's a, it's a memory question. <laughs> um, Anna introduced back, I think in the fall, the whole issue around the clinics that are the quite, yeah. yeah, they are, you know, trying to talk people out of abortions. She withdrew that, am I correct? That yes. is correct. Thank you. I, that's all I needed to know. Yeah, because... that, that was withdrawn and in its in some sense in its place, we're trying, we're, we're thinking about this route over reintroducing that one. Um, thank you. Okay. Um, all right, so we can move ahead on that. Um, blah, 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 where are we? I had written in the minutes review and make a recommendation of the proposed flag policy. Um, and I actually, uh, and let me see, I had a requested Paul have KP law look quickly at the banner changes that we made in the public way. Um, and I think I confused what I put in the packet. Um, so, but we haven't referred, Lynn, go ahead. Did we get an opinion? No, no, not yet. Let me no. just mention, it, it, KP law is very backed up right now because of um, town meetings and budget periods. And so we're having trouble getting opinions on just about everything. Yeah, okay. yeah, and it's interesting because in the um, bylaw disposition thing, when it gets to parades and stuff like that, Again, it talks about free speech issues, uh, which is what we try to address uh, clearly in the uh, banner changes. Um, so I hope we can make those limits by defining it as uh, government speech. Uh, okay, I, um, I guess we can go over the bylaw review committee um, recommendations and the memo that we received from Paul. Um, it's taken forever to get him to respond, which has been a little distressing. Um, and it came into the packet last minute because he said he would have it ready and then it was not ready. Uh, so have you had a chance to look through it? Lynn? I have to some extent, but also he referred to this as the second memo. The first memo went out, and there have been several men memos. The, a memo went out to him, I think, in January of 2021. And um, I did not find a response to that. So this is his latest response to these items. I had a meeting with him where he basically went through these. Uh, the legal opinion on parades and public uh, meetings, we did not go through, but the other items we did. Okay, and and the goal. I just want to, you know, because I was I've been on and off GOL around this issue over, you know, two different uh, times. Um, the goal in this case is either the these these bylaws were identified during the initial bylaw review that was done by a committee per the charter. Okay, yes. and then they were referred to GOL for resolution as to whether we were going to look right. at them, make changes, and or say, no, they're fine the way they are. 
I, as I looked at this memo, it did not seem like it was the full list of all those bylaws. No, uh, these are the ones that, because uh, there's a group, and I apologize, I don't have those numbers. I'd have to look back on another, and I might actually. There were a series of them that we felt we had casually, informally said, they're fine, let's leave them alone. Okay. Uh, but Athena, these were all ones with larger questions. Okay, Athena. On the ones that we have, quote, casually said they're fine, do we need to bring that back to the council to officially take them off the list? Um, I think there should be something to follow up with the council, a report or something to kind of close that, that loop. Okay, so what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to move toward is we can start reviewing Paul's memo and that's perfectly fine, but I'm trying to get us as GOL to come up with how do we want to, in a consolidated way, bring this list back to the council as an update and say either we're, this one's fine or this one we moved with, et cetera. Um, Any ideas? Lynn, your hand's still up. Which uh, is no, that was my my whole. I don't want it to, I don't want this to come back to the council in a piecemeal fashion. So I just want us to try to find a way to well, okay. make some decisions and communicate it, and then take what actions we need to. Okay, okay. thank you. No, that's fine. And Jennifer, you seem frozen, although you're I'm not sure she is she. You you guys keep freezing too. Am I frozen now? Now you're no, now you're moving. Now you, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I can do is I could go um start that. I mean, it, these are clear. Uh, I think there's some actions and things we need to look at within it. And I can go back to that, the uh, list of bylaws that we informally said, hmm, let's let's leave them alone. It's, Athena? Pat, why don't you and I plan to, to meet before the next GOL meeting and see if we can get this all cleaned up so that you can provide a report and it's it's clear what, what um, that would be great. We're asking you all to do so. You and I can work on that before the next meeting. Okay. Uh, the next meeting is on the seventh, and I will not be back until June seventh. Yeah. So I have to. I'll have to meet with you before somewhere between before the thirty first, because I will be out of town. Is that possible for you? Yep. We can do that. Okay, we can set that up at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Okay, so is that comfortable with to people? Yes, that makes sense. And I know that there were other ones. I'm sorry, I should raise my hand. Nah, don't worry about it. It doesn't bother me. Just don't talk over each other like I'm doing over you. That's okay. There were other ones that maybe needed. Yeah, there were priorities from other people. Yes, those most of those are right here. Yeah, um, Paul has. Paul right. saw them. Okay, that's what I. That was my. That's what we talked about memory. in in the meeting that I had with him. Um, so I will go through because uh, they had we had the bylaw review committee had prioritized. Uh, items. I'll go back over that before I meet with you, Athena, um, so we can look at that. And these were items that they considered top priority. So, um, okay. Uh, Jennifer? Yeah, I'm just wondering the bylaw review committee, did that exist the first year of the council only? Yes, it did. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a huge effort. I mean, they did unbelievable work. Uh, Bob Ritchie was kind of the chair coordinator of it. 
and there were two oh, other. It wasn't people. a council committee. No. It was. It was not a council committee, but Evan Ross, Alyssa Brewer, and I were all on the committee. Uh, Bob Ritchie, as Lynn said, and then I'm blanking on. Oh, Bernie. Bernie Kubiak was on it, and there was one other person. Uh, Jeff Kravitz. Kravitz, yeah, Jeff Kravitz. And, was, and was it began there. with the committee that was before. <laughs> anyway, yes. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. That's Thanks. one reason why I want I. Asked, provided a little groundwork, Jennifer, because I knew that you weren't on the council at that point. And uh, yet I also want to just uh, contribute to the fact that it was a huge effort. And what we're okay. trying to do is clean this up because it started with GOL, or it, it was referred to GOL in our first term. term. It was on the uh, transition document from the first to the second term. And I'd like it just not to be on the transition documents from the second to the third. Well, it's like what we just did with the CRC. Yes, the exactly. Right. It'll stay exactly. there forever, right? That's kind right. of, right, yeah. Right. All right, do we wanna go over uh, Paul's list or? I think the ones I had uh, questions about would would be the parade one. Residential rent or property, that's in CRC. I'm not even worried about that one, um, but it was prioritized. Or do you wanna wait? I, gu I guess I, I'm trying to understand, there's a very uh, long attorney's opinion about parades. And again, it seems like we can uh, we can really only affect a few things like the time providing alternative uh, routes if there is a conflict with something that's already a uh, parade that's already happening. Um, do people wanna talk about this now or wait until Athena until the next meeting? I'm fine with going ahead. I would actually suggest we, deal with the easy ones and just say, okay, now that can go on the chart is resolved or whatever. Yeah, most of them, the library one, let me see. So I think that the um, personnel bylaw one, mm -hmm. I think is fine. That's, I think the update answers that. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Human Rights Commission, uh, that's been taken care of it. Well, it's it, the DEI director and the Human Rights Director will be working on that when I say taken care of. And that's also true of the personnel bylaw, um, the Human uh, Rights and Human Rights Commission. Uh, the DEI director and the uh, human resources director will be working on that. I'm hoping we can move these along because all of those things were said before. Um, yeah. So uh, let me see. License and permits and denial. It, um, it did seem that it was fine that um, Yeah, it's it. The um, term "other municipal charges" is broad and it encompasses everything that's listed in the bylaw. So I think that one is fine, unless somebody has seen something that I'm not seeing. I haven't. I didn't read this one that carefully. Yeah, it's a tricky one. Well. Well, let's let's let it be then and go on to the ones that yeah. we yeah because I don't want to wait I do want to get to the snow and ice because we have a couple things that have come up about that um, again wetlands protection all of this is supposed to have been happening I'm hoping it will happen this time uh, right to farm same thing by law three four six am I going too fast Athena or yeah. or anyone else. Basically, what this is telling me, and that's what I thought it was telling me, was we're going to be seeing a bunch of these bylaws come back from staff. Yeah. So, well, we hope. I mean, <laughs> right. Yeah, we hope. So, so would the would the committee's action be to take them off the list and 
and um, just mm -hmm. wait for changes proposed by the town manager? Um, just to get I think out I would of like, committee? I'd like, I'm sorry, Jennifer, go ahead. No, finish my question can come after. I would like us to keep them on a list, but be very clear that we need either another update and or propose changes to these bylaws um, to be brought forth to the council, you know, when ready. I. The, I'm looking at this and I'm going, there's no way we're going to resolve all of this by 2000, end of 2023. No, no. It's, but the thing that I, I I'm sorry, Jay, I just want to say one thing. The thing that feels critical to me is that we keep pushing Paul because these are the same requests we had last year um, and possibly the year before. And I know he's extraordinarily busy, uh, but, you know, so, so I just want to, I agree that we need to keep track of them so that we know whether we get updates on them periodically. Jennifer? Yeah, and I don't want to waylay the discussion, but the illegal dumping and littering, does that apply townwide or is that being thought just for conservation land? Well, that, one of the things is that with that, they were the question was, do we want to expand where that's happening? Um, okay, so can I ask a question? Because this is no. a really huge issue in District Three. <laughs> uh, no, no, because I no, no, I'm not. I knew you were going to say that. That's all. I mean, it, so. right? No, no, no. But it's it's a really problematic. I have yes, pictures yes. after picture after picture of um, you I know, agree. it's just yeah. So could that apply? You know the yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying to get. Yeah. The actual bylaw, hold on. Um, all right, this says no person shall place or cause to be placed any waste, refuse, boxes, or any other matter in or on any street, park, or commons. So I think it's already covered in the original bylaw. It may not be enforced. Um, uh, uh, and it talks about the public way or any other public land or inland waters. Um, but what it doesn't say is conservation land, per se. I'm going, Lynn. I'm going to go to Mandy, and then I can come back to you. Is oh, that I, I please take my hand. In. Sorry, I got Mandy. Sorry. Lynn could have gone first. Yeah. So I, I'm trying to remember, Pat. You probably remember better than me, but I think this was, you know, both of those paragraphs are fairly vague. Right yet not vague right <laughs> within 20 yards of this and in theory what that says it waters property of another lands dedicated for open space right. you know it says conservation agriculture you know in theory 20 yards of a public way or any other public land in theory it's not vague but yet at the same time it's kind of vague yeah <laughs> um, and so i think what they were thinking was you know specific get a little more specific or define some things instead of just use words, <laughs> maybe start defining what open space is, you know, dedicated open space purposes. And yeah, yeah. so I, I think that's what they were. Referencing. Yes, it is exactly what they were concerned with. Clear yeah. it up. Yeah. So, so uh, perhaps that I don't, uh, I can work on that too. Lynn? I want to go back to Jennifer's concern. And that is that at in looking at this bylaw, how do we deal in fact with people who literally walk through neighborhoods and litter? And is this the place to deal with that? And maybe, you know, uh, Paul or somebody, uh, I can't remember in what situation was talking about, um, you know, four beer kegs that got left on. In, sunset, in the sunset now. Yeah. And, so, well, and the town really couldn't do anything about it because it was on private property. And yet in neighborhoods near the university, this is a serious problem. 
Well, there is criminal, there's a $250 fine um, with for criminal enforcement and the same uh, penalty for non-criminal enforcement is by police officers, superintendent of public works, public health agents, health officers, or health director. So I'm, I'm, I need some clarification and perhaps one of either Lynn or Mandy can give it about private property. But this, what if it's the street? It's often just the, the side street is, in the yeah. street is included in here. And we, you know, and we can, and if we define the terms, we can be very specific about public ways, et cetera. Mandy? So what's interesting is the streets covered by this first sentence mm -hmm. and the second sentence, but property of another is included in the second paragraph. I think that's one long sentence, believe it or not, on that second paragraph, but it or, does or say, uh, or within 20 yards of such property or on property of another or on lands dedicated. So, you know, again, I think part of the thing was it's so everything's yeah. mixed up together in this and vague and not clear as to what its intent was. The thing I was going to comment on also is this non criminal disposition, given what we've talked about with snow and ice. We're looking at like five different people here. Um, and and do we run into similar problems with that that we've run into with snow and ice of people just pass the buck off to well it's not me it's the health director no it's not me it's the DPW it, it do they not know who should be writing the ticket given mm -hmm. and not everybody can write a ticket because uh, DPW right. can't write tickets um, so again uh, it, and probably police officers would be traffic officers. Um, superintendent of Public Works can't enforce it, really. Um, health agents, health office, can they issue citations? The health inspector, I believe, can. But I don't know about that. No, I don't even know if that's true. And this I, would be I would assume they do because aren't they the ones that issue it for restaurants? It makes yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the, okay. Uh, and the other thing is it seems to me that this is should be um, in the inspection department because they're the ones that look see the property and they're gonna hate us. Jennifer. <laughs> you yeah, know, I'm just gonna say, I mean the, the issue with all this is you rarely see the person doing it. So that's but the I, challenge yeah. in terms of issuing a ticket or citation. Right. <clears throat> Every house in your district needs a video camera that's on 24 hours a day, paid for <laughs> through <laughs> these fines. <laughs> All we need is university to retain someone to clean up the streets every Monday. But <laughs> <laughs> I like that better. <laughs> That's a great idea. They don't, they won't do it. <laughs> I can't, you're. I made the request. It was not asking. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm asking. I know I keep freezing. I'm going to. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Um, where are we? Regulation is of signs is going to become an important priority for I'm moving from littering and illegal dumping. Is that OK? Um, the regulation of signs is going to be the planning director. It's it's an important priority. So they will work on it. Um, they'll add it to their work plan. So who knows? Um, and, and then I'm back to parades. Um, I want to look at the time. And oh, we're fine. Okay, I want to make sure that we look at snow and ice a little bit before. So, do people have people had time to read this?
Uh, Tracy's email? No, that's for snow and ice. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, the, the parades and public meetings issue. No. Or, okay, all right, Thank then we'll leave that for the next meeting because it's gonna be a whopper, I guess, maybe, maybe. All right, then I would like us to move to snow and ice and Tracy's comments are kind of important um, and she was not able to be here to make them. Uh, there's no one right now uh, in our audience. Um, there are a couple of things that I noticed uh, that uh, she's talking about having DPW um, be the enforcer and because they have snow removal equipment and stuff, but that seems to me to be um, part of the problem that we've had is that DPW has cleaned things that residents then want them to continue to clean where it's not their responsibility. But I'm gonna to go to Jennifer, go ahead. Yeah, I think Tracy is okay with inspection services or DPW. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we can I, do that. I, I want to, I, I will reach out to her about why it's not DPW. Um, well, didn't Paul not want it? I thought maybe Paul, Paul be more amenable to inspection services. Paul wanted one entity and we offered, he wanted either the police department or inspection services. So right. I thought. Um, so I think Tracy would I, feel good with inspection services over the police. Yes, absolutely. Yeah from everything I can, but I will reach out to her. I wanna explain why DPW is not, because they don't generally issue citations. Yeah. Um, and she also brought up the idea of curb cuts or curb ramps or, uh, and making it, uh, or a, uh, to mention where it says abutting sidewalks at crosswalks and intersections. Where is that? In the charge, I believe. Mm. Yeah, and then she offered even language from Greenfield or Northampton. Right, right. Let me see. Uh, so what she's talking about, section A under purpose, revising access to sidewalks and public ways to access the two sidewalks, including abutting curb cuts, curb ramps, and to public ways. So would be people be comfortable with adding that in the purpose or amendment? Can you repeat read that? Yes, she's suggesting um, revising access to sidewalks and public ways to, be, is to amend it to say access to sidewalks including abutting curb cuts slash curb ramps and to public ways. And the rest of the sentence continue. Curb cuts and curb ramps, ramps? Ramps, yes, as curb cuts slash curb ramps. And what was the, I'm sorry. And to public ways, public ways and then it would say public parking places. Okay. Yeah. I don't think we need the and two in front of public ways. Yeah, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, that was my error. And let me see. Is there anything else that's come up? I'm trying to remember. I think that was, yeah, yeah, I think that was everything that she was saying. Am I wrong, Jennifer? You looked at it clearly as well. Yeah, you know, I did, because <clears throat> I just wrote her back and said, thanks for sending it. And then she wrote back, but I see it's already there and just responded. She said, Michelle had asked a question whether other towns include snow and ice and vegetative overgrowth in one bylaw. And she said, some have it separately. If we were going to have it together, which is good to include vegetative overgrowth, but I see we have that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Mandy? Um, going along with what Tracy had us add in section A about purpose, um, 
and I'm just looking at we talk about sidewalks in section B, but section C is public ways. And so this is where oh, Tracy talked about um, the plowing onto corners essentially from things. And so I wonder, I, I think we should add in that first sentence that says obstruction on any public way, sidewalk or public parking place any public way sidewalk, including whatever that phrase we just added was. Um, curb cuts. Abutting curb cuts and curb ramps. Um, or just, I don't think we need a budding there. Any public way sidewalk, curb cut, curb ramp, or public parking space, maybe. Yeah. That. And then I think it covers both sections and clears up the other thing Tracy was talking about. Right, right. Anything else? Oh. Go ahead, Mandy. This is more for the motion. Athena, would this just be easier as a repeal and replace at this point? Yeah. That would be so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> just thinking about the motion going forward. <laughs> yes. Yes, right. please recommend to repeal and replace. Mandy, would you make the motion? Athena, can you create quickly a separate document <laughs> that just calls this 3.40 obstruction of public ways and snow and ice removal? Just to, like accept everything. and Because <laughs> then we can just in the motion reference the document. Right. Yeah, let me, right. let me see if I can do this quick. Um, I just want to make sure I get. Retain all the changes. Yeah. Um, Okay, so it looks like, no, I can't because. These are actually underlined and strike struck through. So I have to, I have to go through and um, take out all the crossed out language and unread and underlined. I thought it was all track changes, but it's not. Yeah. So um, weird. If you if you want to um, do minutes or something and I can try and quickly do that. Okay. Uh, in the packet we have the May 10th, 2023 meeting minutes. Are there any issues that anyone wants to address? Not seeing any hands, I would like to make a motion that we accept the uh, May 10th, 2023 meeting min minutes as presented. Is there okay. a second? Mandy, okay. Oh, Jennifer, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and we'll start with you for the vote, Jennifer? Uh, yes. Okay, Lynn? Yes. Mandy? Aye. And I'm an aye. 
Uh, so it's four in favor, one absent. Is that enough time yet? No, huh? <laughs> what can I'm, we do? <laughs> I'm, I'm almost there. Yeah, almost yeah that's there. fine. Yeah, please, please. I could tell a joke since nobody's there. And <laughs> just weird that it showed up like it was track changes but right. actually wasn't i think we made a lot of progress with this bylaw revision yeah i think we did too i have a question because i have trouble when i go to copy sent so i can send somebody uh the track changes or i just want to print a copy with the track changes of something that's in our packet or or the council's packet and i'm having how do you print something so the track changes are visible for yourself um so you don't need to answer that athena i was trying to give you more time but it's a legitimate question oh. and i can get the answer from you later okay uh i think that's it amazing thank you uh, i see two more quick things in c mm -hmm. there's that oh. lined out or and then um, in non-criminal disposition, there's just a missing comma between snow and ice. Those were the only two I quickly saw. So with that, I guess I'll make well, hang on one second, because I realized that one of the Tracy's other things was about the complaint letter uh, that DPW sends out. Um, if they receive a complaint, they send a letter that says, uh, we had this in the packet a while ago, that there are a number of days before it has to be addressed, which is now slightly different than this bylaw, because we're saying a shorter period of time. We we changed b3 to 10 days oh that's right okay right the overgrowth so the complaint letter can go out with yeah. 10 days yeah okay thank you i didn't remember that okay are you ready for it pat absolutely okay um i move that to recommend the council repeal General Bylaw 3.40 Snow and Ice in its entirety and replace it with uh, General Bylaw 3.40 Obstruction of Public Ways and Snow and Ice Removal um, as amend uh, presented at GOL on May 24th, 2023. Or as record. Does that work, Athena? Um, um as uh, presented. Why wouldn't we say recommended? Oh, I, I moved to recommend the council adopt or yeah. rescind yeah. and replace. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. I, I'll, I guess, sorry, I forgot one thing. And to declare <laughs> the <laughs> obstruction of public ways and snow and ice removal by law clear, consistent, and actionable. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun getting this one out of GOL. <laughs> is that, is there a second? <clears throat> second. <laughs> And I just want to say, Mandy, Joe, and Jennifer at the council meeting that will now, oh, I don't know. Can we do this the first reading on the Monday the 5th, Athena? I don't think so. Yeah, you could put the first reading on the 5th as long as by Friday. We post. The reading can be on the 12th. Yeah, okay. If If it's posted on the bulletin board on Friday. The 26th. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, all right. So we'll put this as first reading, and I'm going to be calling since Pat won't be there. So Jennifer and Mandy Joe, you're going to be speaking on this one. Yeah. And Mandy Joe, keep quiet if you can. I would love to see Jennifer I, present <laughs> as well. I'm happy to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to see Jennifer do it too. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer's our vice chair. Right, exactly. <laughs> Happy to do it. Right, exactly. if there's a report to be made. I hope you're going somewhere fun. I'm going to my nephew, my great nephew's uh, graduation in Florida. Oh, that sounds fun. That'll be nice, but I don't like Florida. So for many ideological reasons, and uh, also it's just not my kind of land. Um, but I love my family. I love my Brian. So it'll be really wonderful. That's great. I will... Be delighted not to be here <laughs> for a little bit. I really need a break. Yeah, you do. Yeah, many ways. Much, much deserved. <laughs> for all of us, but yeah. Uh, okay, let's vote. Do we, we have to vote on this, right? I'm gonna vote aye. We have a second. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah, Jennifer was second. Excellent. Lynn Griesmer. Yes. Andy Joe Haneke. Aye. And Jennifer Taub. Yes. All right. It's uh, unanimous with one absent Jennifer. Yeah, no, I just wanted to um, express appreciation to Tracy Zafian for yes. her really careful read and great suggestions. Yeah, yeah she's a really, really thoughtful person on so many levels. It's great. He is. Um, where are we? Uh, the banner, I told you, so uh, did we send, the the flag policy has been reviewed, I believe, by KP Law. Are we, have we recommended it to the council yet? I don't believe that we have. No, Yeah. because so, there, were, there were questions at the last meeting. Okay, do you remember what they, all right, so I'm wrong about that. So. Go ahead, Mandy, do you? I think. The question was, do we adopt the proposed flag policy before we can get answers to how to do the banner public okay. ways delegation, or do we try to do them together? Thank you. Thank you. I think was the biggest question outstanding. And I, I, I thought GOL wanted to try and do the two together. And then we had the quite big questions about the street banners and how to Right. Word all of that given what all's there. Okay. So is that still what people would like to do? It seems logical. Okay. So if I'm looking through this right now, my the agenda, uh, we could go to public comment, but there are no public participants today, not even what oh, no, I'm wrong. Julian Hines has come in. So I'm gonna call for a period of public comment. And if anyone would like to make public comment for up to three minutes, they may raise their hand. Please don't say attendees' names. No, I oh, even in a little bit that I, yeah, I'm sorry. Not seeing any hands raised, I'm going to call an end to public comment period. And Unless the uh, items not anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance or discussion of future agenda items. One of the things that I, Michelle had brought forward when she was chair was an ex equity um, review process. And I'm gonna be talking with uh, Pamela Young about that and seeing where to go with that. So, um, is there anything else that anyone can see that they we should deal with before we adjourn the meeting? No. Mandy and then Jennifer. I apologize because I had to take a phone call in the middle of the meeting. Um, did we just postpone the rules of procedure? Yeah. Okay. No, we didn't, but we are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's to say, no, I, it, there were a lot of different things. We were talking about adjusting areas and stuff like that. So I would like us to have enough time to Got really it. do that. Um, and um, I don't know if we can meet, but you were thinking about some of the same move, section movements that I was um, 
So I, I don't know, I'll email you my th thoughts about that. Um, Jennifer? Uh, yeah, will you be back for the June 7th GOL meeting? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I might just confer with you about the report to the council, but I'll email you about that. Yeah, so yeah. I will have, I will be reading emails. I'm just not going to log in to the meetings when I'm traveling. We'll, we'll try not to bother you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, was there a discussion about changing meeting times while I was on the phone? I heard some, uh, I was trying to sort of, okay. No, no, no. Okay. No. I apologize. No, that, for what? I'm asking a question. All right, if there is nothing else that needs to come up, I am going to adjourn the meeting. Athena, can you stay on and we can pick a date to meet? All right, yeah. see ya. See ya. Okay, bye-bye.